it's it's Erica and I am back with another vi vi video <laughs> today I will be reacting to a, a video by P Paul and Morgan they have a video about why they stopped watching the show WandaVision and I am gonna react to that in just a a moment. So I'm I'm doing something a bit different than what I've done before with my, my videos because for this one I have no notes. I'm gonna be watching it live. Well, not not live when you're watching this, but live when I'm recording it. I have not watched this video before, so I'm interested in hearing what they have to say and giving you a, a, a genuine reaction. So let's get into it. I'm trying to put my sound up so that I can hear it and then I'll hopefully be able to put in some clips so you can see exactly what I'm reacting to. And there's a, a biblical commercial, which is fine, but I mean, it it seems a bit... What's up guys, how you doing? I'm Paul. In today's video, why we decided to turn off WandaVision. Now Morgan, when I thought of this topic, of this title, one of the first things that came to mind was some people may see this and be like, wow. So one thing... Not quite there. This video, there's more gray area and I just want to start out by acknowledging that. try that again it's maybe a little more appropriate analogy <laughs> so get the stick out of your butt <laughs> we are leaving those in we are not <laughs> i'm gonna just start off with is i feel like a lot of times paul speaks for or organ and that just seems like kind of an unhealthy D d d dynamic. I mean, of course, we can't know what goes on behind closed doors, but as someone who has been in in toxic relationships before, that does raise a a red flag with me. Another example of Christians being too sensitive and trying to push their stuff on us when we don't have those same convictions. And can I just say, we made a video a week or so ago where we talked about Cardi B, Megan Thee Stallion on the Grammys, and we came down very hard on that and very hard on Christians that were okay with that. This video is not quite there. This video, there's more gray area, and I just want to start out by acknowledging that. Well, at least Paul is acknowledging that there are some gray areas even with topics they may not agree with like just because they're against something doesn't mean it's inherently bad and I mean everything has its its flaws you can have the best most socially conscious movie or or a TV show and there will be and there will still be some flaws with it because people are making it and people are flawed. So, get your panties out of the wad. And then, of course, Morgan has to be like, so get your panties out of a wad, which is like, stop. Like, people are allowed 
to be annoyed at you if you say something and it gets them mad. Like, they're allowed to be like, can you not, like, push your religion onto other people? And then, and then Paul tone polices Morgan by say, saying, let's try with a less in, inappropriate metaphor. And then she goes on to use another s s sexual metaphor, which, I mean, that seems unhealthy in their dynamic, but he's constantly correcting her and telling her what, she can and cannot say. More appropriate analogy. <laughs> so get the stick out of your butt. <laughs> We're gonna leave it with it. We are not. We, I don't know if we will. So take the chill pill. There it is. Before we get into this video though, make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on the notification bell. We make videos on culture and social issues from a Christian perspective to help you have hope. Shout out to our patrons. Thank you guys for supporting what we're doing on this channel and believing in what we're doing. You guys are a huge part of this, and we will be going live on Zoom with you all shortly. We'll announce that on Patreon. Thanks, guys. If you want to become a patron, you can click the link below. And even more recently, I just have seen people raving about the finale. On Instagram, all my friends. No, not all my friends. But I've definitely seen on Instagram some people that I follow. They're like, I was just making it to the finale. Really, yeah, because I guess it came out in, like, each week a new episode, and then the finale, the final episode, and people were loving it. I initially saw that there was this show called WandaVision. I've watched most of the Marvel movies. I give most of them a thumbs up, just to, so you guys get an idea of where we're coming from. I see that there's this WandaVision, and I'm just going to be honest with you guys. When I saw that the, the whole show was dedicated to one of Marvel's characters, who ultimately is a witch. Granted, she's, you know, a superhero witch. Scarlet Witch. So, so now they're getting into the their criticism of the show and talking about how Wanda, one of the protagonists of the show who's played by Elizabeth Olsen is supposed to be a witch. And I guess they're against that for some reason I don't really know like I like I've been to church I've been involved in the Christian community and I never really knew people had a problem with like fictional characters that were witches but I mean I guess some sects of Christian Christianity might be against that. Sure, yeah. Superhero, which I'm thinking, eh, hesitant. Yeah, he was. We were just looking for a show, and he and I said, you know, I've seen a bunch of people talk about WandaVision. I actually didn't know anything about Wanda. I just thought she was a superhero, whatever. And more, I didn't realize that she was, like, technically like considered a witch. More or less, I would say, superhero overshadows her witch. Yeah. But that's her name, Scarlet Witch. So for me and guys, she is a witch. Granted, she's, you know, a superhero witch. Scarlet Witch. Scarlet Witch is her, yeah. Superhero witch. I'm thinking, eh, hesitant. Yeah, he was. We were just looking for a show, and he, and I said, you know, I've seen a bunch of people talk about WandaVision. I actually... Superhero overshadows her witchness. Yeah. But that's her name, Scarlet Witch. So for me, and guys, again, a little background, Harry Potter, I've read several of the books. Again, a little background. Harry Potter, I've read several of the books. I've seen maybe all the movies. Up until, movies. Up until about two years ago, I Morgan, Same. back to WandaVision. I was hesitant to watch it, and I heard lots of people raving about the finale. Morgan and I were about to start a new show, and I thought to myself, let's see what this is about. Let's see if they're really going to play into the... The dark witchcraft that, that center. Right, that... And now they're talking about if the show plays into the dark witchcraft, which I mean, as someone that watched the show, I don't really think they, they did that. Like, yeah, the one character, oh, 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 literally, if you didn't finish the show, do not watch 
any further, but if you watched the show or if you don't care about spoilers, then feel free to continue watching. But uh, another character in the show, Agatha or Agnes, she has two names, but um, she was more of the dark witch than Wanda. So I don't really know what they're in Hanging on to right now. I'm like, did they watch the show right now? I'm not really sure because of what they're saying. It doesn't seem to line up with what I watched. Exactly that side of it, or are they gonna stay more on the superhero side? Yes, she can do some magic, treat it kind of like you know. No, no, and now they're saying they wish that it would have stayed on the superhero side, which with like. But, and it, uh, instead of magic, and my, my question for them would be, so how do superheroes have these superpowers if it weren't for like magic? Because in real life, people don't have those powers. There aren't people like Sp Spider-Man or Superman or Black Panther. There aren't people like that in real life with those powers. So where do they, they expect the powers come from in these movies? Because in some form, it's magic. Cinderella, where she's just you now the bippity-boppity, yeah, waving a magic wand. It's going to be more of that type. Again, uh, you guys can decide where you're at with all of that. But I was just thinking to myself, we'll see how much they play into the witchcraft, the magic. If they stay mostly away from it, go ahead and watch it and see what it's about. If they really play into it, we'll go ahead and pump the brakes. Yeah, the first six or so episodes were really good. We really liked them. We did. Um, yes, there were magic like type things, but again, it wasn't like really focusing on that. That wasn't the main point of the story. There really wasn't any like darkness. It was like with Wanda and Vision living in her La La Land, whatever. It felt yeah very tame. Yeah. For those of you who haven't watched it or like are in the middle of watching it, I hope like we don't want to give away. No, and now they're saying the first few episodes felt tame. And I would like to push back against that because what do they mean by tame? Like, the first few episodes d depicted regular, like, white bread it hit comes where everything was all hunky and dory. And, like, are they saying that that's the type of content they were looking for because if you're going to a Marvel TV show for that type of content, you're probably not gonna get it. Any spoilers or anything, so maybe you need to be careful watching this, but... I would guess most people have already seen it that are going to watch it. Yeah. Probably. Sure. Um, maybe. Maybe. So, episode 7 or 8, it got really dark in our opinion, just with the witchcraft and... and Episode the the that side of it, or are they gonna stay more on the superhero side? Yes, she can do some magic, and she's really really dark. The enchantments yeah. and the powers, yeah. Your episodes aren't dark with witchcraft. Like yeah, there is witchcraft, but like the hitch 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 hitchular character Wanda, like she's not a bad witch. Like, yeah, she's done some bad things with her powers, but I feel like that's what the show is about. Like, she's a good person, but is just a, a bit messed up because she's gone through her drama. And isn't every show like that? Like, you're not going to watch a show with these perfect people, with these perfect lives that never do anything bad if you're watching that like why what's the point because then not, nothing happens and there's no t t t t tension in the show and there's no conflict that needs to be resolved so from a I I hiding perspective because I'm actually a writer by trade from a writing perspective it's like what are they looking for in a show
and now they're saying Agnes came in and she was really, really dark, which, I mean, yeah, she was. But also, first of all, like Wanda, she also dealt with trauma. Like, she was, like, her oven of witches turned their back on her and they tried to kill her. So, obviously, that's going to cause a lot of trauma. But also... Even if you wanted to ignore that and just say she's evil, she's bad, we hate her, but it's like, that's what a villain in a superhero movie or a TV show is. They're not these great people. They're going to be kind of bad. La La Land, whatever. It felt, yeah, very tame. Yeah. For those of you who haven't watched, it literally, like, affects me, and it makes me mad that I don't get to watch it or whatever. And Paul wasn't telling me that I couldn't watch it. He just literally said for himself he's not going to watch it. Even though if she had said, okay, cool, Paul, I'm going to watch it, <laughs> I may have had some encouragements for her, but... I think that's where a lot of... And it kind of upsets me that Morgan says Paul said he was going to stop watching it and she kind of pushed back against that and it, it seems like he didn't take, take her opinion into account he's just like well I, I don't want to watch this and you sh shouldn't either if you want to be a, a good Christian which that, that's kind of messed up if your relationship is like that because what makes him the authority on what makes you a good Christian? There's only one episode left. Might as well just watch it. And it's the that episode was... that everyone's raving yeah. about and saying how strong the finale was. Yeah, so that was the first thought that ran through my mind. And then I was just kind of like, okay, first of all, I don't need to have an attachment to a show so much that like if I can't watch the, the next episode or the finale that like it literally like No, and then she says she doesn't need to have an attachment to a show where if she doesn't watch the finale, she's going to be upset or mad. And, like, I get that if you're, maybe if you're a Christian and you always want to put God first, then maybe you feel that way. But also, there's nothing wrong with if you start a show and you've gotten this far. You just want to see the last um, episode because... I mean, that's where the end is. He wasn't telling me that I couldn't watch it. He just literally said for himself he's not going to watch it. Even though if she had said, okay, cool, Paul, I'm going to watch it. <laughs> I may have had some encouragements for her, but... And then Paul says if she said she was going to continue to watch it, he would have had some encouragements for her to stop, which I don't want to know what that means, and I'm not going to sp sp speculate what that means, but it just, it doesn't seem like a very healthy dynamic. He shouldn't be telling her what she can and cannot do, and then even if he doesn't do that, let's just say he says, oh, you can do that, but if you do it, you're not a, a very good person. Like, that's very m un manipulative behavior and it's kind of upsetting to hear that he openly admits this on his YouTube channel because then because usually people publicly don't admit the, the worst things they do and I'm not here to speculate on what he does behind the scenes but that just kind of Puts up another red flag. I think that's where a lot of people are. Is like they get into a show and it's like fine for even maybe a whole season, but then the second season comes along and you realize, dang, they've taken a lot of liberties. Um, sure. They have added in a lot of things that were not in the first season. But and now Morgan says like that a lot of people like they may like 
I show its first few episodes, or then like the first season, and then after that, the show may change or go into things that it didn't originally seem to be about, but they feel too attached to stop watching. And yeah, that that may be the case for many people, but as someone who has watched shows and has watched multiple seasons of a show, and then if if something comes up in the show that's very problematic, like say it turns out very ableist or just bigoted in a different way, I will stop watching it if it's really against my values and I'm like, I can't handle it anymore. Like, I'll stop watching it. And I feel like a lot of other people are like that. Like, if something's really against what they're all about, they're going to stop watching something. I've already invested so much time in the show, like, oh, I'll just have to look past it. I know that I did that a lot in the past, and so this time around, I was like, I'm a changed woman, I do not need to watch this show, and it is right. It's like, well, I'm trying to live this holy lifestyle, so why would I invite this darkness into my life through a TV show? I don't care what it's it's through something, and it's dark, and it's heavy, and I don't want that. And once again, I want to read. No, and she's saying she doesn't want dark and heavy stuff in her life. But isn't life heavy? Doesn't the Bible have some heavy topics in it, like murder? I don't think I can say that on YouTube, so I might have to cut out that word. But um, like, they have some, like the Bible does have some dark themes in it. So if they're okay with that, why aren't they okay with the TV show? Reiterate that we do have different convictions. There is a gray area, as we said. The Grammys, Cardi B performance, I don't call that a gray area. I call that ungodliness. Just how I a lot of liberties. Um, sure. They have added in a lot of things that were not in the first season, but I've already invested so much time in this show. Like, oh, I'll just have to look past it. I know that, that I did that a lot in the past. And so this time around, I was like, I'm a changed woman. I do not need to watch the show. And it is right. It's like, well, I'm trying to live this holy lifestyle. So why would I invite this darkness into my life through a TV show? I don't care what it's through. It's through something and it's dark and it's heavy. And I don't want a lot of liberties. Um, sure. They have added in a lot of things that were not in the first season, but I've already invested so much time in this show. Like, oh, I'll just have to look past it. I know that, that I did that a lot in the past. And so this time around, I was like, I'm a change woman I do not need to watch the show and it is right it's like well, I'm trying to live this holy lifestyle so why would I invite this darkness into my life through a TV show I don't care what it's through it's through something and it's dark and it's heavy and I don't want that and once again I want to reiterate that we do have different convictions there is a gray area as we said the Grammys Cardi B performance I don't call that a gray area I call that ungodliness mm -hmm. just for you to look at it for a christian i call and now they're rambling about how cardi b and megan the, these just 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 hellions performance at the grammys was ungodly which who are they to say that because what i know from megan the he's just just hellion and i don't know about cardi b because i'm not really a big fan Hannaford's, but I do really enjoy some of Megan the East just Alien's music and also more so what she stands for and what she speaks about like when she wrote that editorial for the New York Times about violence against black women. I really enjoyed that article and I thought what she was saying was very good but from what i know about her she is really religious so who are they to tell her that she's going about her religion wrong and they have all the answers and because she embraces her sexuality she's ungodly i don't know that's 
just very upsetting to me. And once again, I want to reiterate that we do have different convictions. There is a gray area, as we said. The Grammys, Cardi B performance, I don't call that a gray area. I call that ungodliness. Mm -hmm. Just that is ungodly, don't watch it. With this, I think there's more gray area, but kind of along the lines of what you were just saying, recently we were at Awakening Night, and Hannah Williamson's dad was given a word, and one thing he said that really just made a lot of sense to me, he was talking about the movies that Christians are okay with, the shows that they invite in their house. He said, Christians, you wouldn't be okay with someone coming in your front door. Drop the F-bomb, 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 and yet you invite shows into your home that are dropping the F-bomb left and right. Christians, you wouldn't be okay, hopefully not, watching through your window, your neighbors have sex. And yet, you invite into your home shows and movies where the characters are having sex. And some of And just starting to drop the F-bomb, F-bomb, F-bomb. And yet, you invite shows into your home that are dropping the F-bomb left and right. Christians, you wouldn't be okay, hopefully not, watching through your window, your neighbors have sex. And yet, you invite into your home shows and movies where the characters are having sex and then now paul is comparing watching movies that show like sinful actions as watching through your window your neighbors having sex which no that that's creepy behavior but if you're watching it on a tv show assuming that all of the actors consented to this and they weren't coerced into filming a scene they, w they didn't want to film, then that's totally different than creeping out your window at your neighbors. Ew. And some of us are so okay with that or so desensitized with that, justifying it, and I, I love that analogy, and so I'm thinking to myself as I'm watching this show, suddenly episode seven comes around, six Really, Paul? Really? You you are going to compare watching a movie that has a sex scene in it to weeping on your neighbors? <sighs> this guy. Six or seven, and yeah, there's this straight up, the witches are all in a circle, and they're casting, you know, enchantments, and I'm just like, I don't need Witches are all in a circle. First of all, they're part of a coven, but even if we're gonna ignore what he's calling it, but um, he's saying that the show is bad because it shows that, but it's like he's talking about the character that is meant to be the villain in this case, and Wanda herself doesn't even identify as a witch, which I mean, even if she did, I don't think that makes her inherently evil or bad. Need to welcome this into my home. I wouldn't welcome witches coming in to say they're about to do a, a ritual and, and making their enchantments and stuff. I wouldn't welcome that into my home. So why am I welcoming it through the TV screen? I think it's a really good point. And it's a really good thing for us as believers to think on because it, that to me, hearing um, Hannah's dad about that was like, whoa, this is such common sense. It's common sense. Like, Why? How, how is our mind? And now they're saying this is common sense for whom? Because lots of people don't have issues with shows or movies depicting witches as long as it's not being offensive towards actual witches, which that's a story for another day, but like, how is this common sense? It's common sense to you and your values, but not everybody shares that. So please don't blanket it and say, this is common sense, and if you're not following it, you're a bad person. It's been pulled so far away from common sense. Yeah. Really. Is it through just gradual desensitizing? Yeah, I think so. It is. It's been a gradual and these are the people that are fine saying homophobic and transphobic and just bigoted things in general. I'm pretty sure they're fatphobic because I've seen some of their thumbnails that I was not about to, to click on because I was like, I don't want to 
hear this. And Morgan says it's countercultural to start a show and get invested and then to stop, which I'm going to push back on because I know plenty of people that have watched, have started watching a show and then the second that it shows something that they don't want to see for whatever reason, and they stop watching it. Like, that's a normal thing to do. People do that whether they're Christian or not. That that's something lots of people do. So calling it countercultural seems kind of ridiculous, and I am gonna stop watching there because I'm getting kind of annoyed with with what they're saying. It's they they just seem to be very <laughs> judgmental people, and I I know I'm kind of a hypocrite for saying that because I'm watching this and I'm reacting to it on camera and I'm like rolling my eyes and shit but but I, I'm not claiming to not be judging them but they claim to not judge other people and 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 they do they cause a lot of harm with their homophobic and transphobic content they cause a lot of harm and that's not okay, and I'm not okay with that. And they probably w wouldn't be okay with what I, what I'm wearing right now. But I don't really care. And that 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 that's it for this video. I get my second dose of the vaccine today, so I don't know if if I'm sick over the weekend. I may not be able to record the videos, but I do have some videos already scheduled to go live for next week and the week after so that should be okay and if you liked this video please give it a a thumbs up and please comment down below what what you thought of this if you have any tips for me because i am pretty new to this and, and also if you want to suggest a YouTuber or a specific video for me to react to if if you, you want to do that you, you can comment that down below because I always read my comments granted I don't get a ton of comments but I mean I always read my comments so I always I, I appreciate your feedback Thank you so much. If you have not already, please s s subscribe. I would really uh, appreciate it because I am trying to grow my ch ch channel and hopefully the, the, the more this channel grows, the better I'm going to get at this because I know I'm not the best YouTuber out there right now, but I am trying my best and just... Thank you so much for, for watching. I hope to see you again in the next video. Bye.